Hi everyone. It's a brand new week, so we're going to start learning something new. Our topic for this week is understanding fractions. Let's start. By the end of today's class, you should be able to define a fraction, a numerator, and a denominator. Recognize parts and wholes. Identify shaded parts and equal parts in a shape, for example, in a circle or a rectangle. And read and write fractions. So what are fractions? A fraction is basically just a number, which represents a part with a whole. Imagine getting your favorite pizza and then cutting them into equal slices. So one slice of it is a fraction of it. Or you can use the same idea to a birthday cake. When you cut the birthday cake into equal slices or parts, it's also a fraction of the cake. A fraction is also a part of a set. So here we have an example of a box of 12 donuts. When are fractions useful? Believe it or not, we use fractions every day without even realizing it. We need fractions when we want to split things up, especially. So when we want to split things up, we have to have equal parts. Now let's have a look at this pizza. Is it cut into equal parts? Or slices? The answer is no. Why is it no? Because you can clearly see that whoever gets this piece will have more than the one who gets this much. At least this person has some meat and vegetables on it, on his or her slice. But this person would only have the crust of the pizza. So it is not equal. It's a no. Now look at the rectangles below. We have rectangle A, which is the blue one, and rectangle B, which is the orange one. Which of the two has equal parts? It's clearly rectangle A. Now let's talk about this pizza. Imagine I ordered this pizza. Do you see any slices? No, because it's not being cut up yet. So it's still one whole. Now, we imagine dividing the pizza equally into two parts, like this. Let's have Ali and Bob in the picture. So two slices, two people. When you want to divide equally, it has to have the same size. So that Ali gets the same size as Bob. Now we can say Ali and Bob, each of them gets one half of the whole pizza. In fraction form, we write one half as one bar two. So one out of two. There's a line in between. The number on top represents the number of parts. Okay? Because it's part of a whole. The number at the bottom down here is the total number of parts. So how many parts altogether? Remember Parts have to be equal. Now, the number on top is called the numerator. And the number at the bottom is called denominator. If you're confused of which one is which, just remember D for denominator and D for down. So the number down here is the denominator. Let's answer the following question. What is the fraction of the color of orange picture below? 
Let's look at the first fraction. We have one colored. So we write one on top. Put R. How many total number of parts? We have two. So we write one out of two. Next one. How many colored? There's only one out of one, two, three. Three parts. Next one. We have one colored again. And there are one, two, three, four parts. So we write one out of four. The next one, easy, also one out of how many total number of parts? There are six of them. Last one, also have one colored part out of total number is four in this side, four in this side, so eight altogether. Now, let's talk about how we're going to write them in words. We know from the previous pizza example, one out of two is called one half. If it's one out of three, we say it's one third. There's the ordinal number coming up. One out of four is called one fourth, or you can call it one quarter. How about one out of six is called one sixth. One out of eight is called one eighth. Notice that the one in yellow have special names like half and quarter. Only these two have special names. Let's look at these five fractions from previous slide. So we have one half, one third, one quarter, one sixth, and one eighth. What do they have all in common? The numerator. The numerator is all one. So if a fraction has one as its numerator, it is called a unit fraction. So all of these fractions are unit fractions. Now let's answer the following question. What is the fraction of the shaded parts of the picture below? First, we will write the denominator. We can see there are one, two, three, four parts, equal parts. And we write out of four. How many shaded now? There is only one. So one out of four, or we say one quarter of the picture is shaded. Now it's two out of four, so two quarters. Now it's three out of four. We write three, line four, and three quarters. And the last one is four out of four. Or we can say four out of four is one whole because the whole picture is being shaded. Now let's look at some more pictures and learn how to write them in numbers and in words. We have a pentagon, which is one out of five because one part is colored and there are five total number of parts second one there are two parts out of two total number of parts so two out of two next one we have one two colored out of one two three parts last one one two three colored one two three four five Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Three out of ten are colored. How to write them in words? So the first one is easy. We just say one fifth. Second one is two out of two. We can write two halves or we can simply put one whole because the whole picture is being colored. The whole shape is colored. Next one. We start with two. We say two. Number three represents thirds, so we write two thirds. Last one is we write three first, and then the following number is tenth. Three tenths. It's quiz time. Look at the circle here. 
So the circle is divided into how many equal parts? Is it six or nine? Remember, if it's divided into how many equal parts, it's the total number of parts. You can count from here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine is the answer. Next one is blank of the circle is shaded. Is it three out of Six is shaded, or six out of nine of the circle is shaded. Remember, the denominator represents the total number of parts. Just now, of the same circle we counted, had nine total number of parts. So this must be correct. So let's look at the numerator. Is it six? One, two, three, four. Four, five, six. Yep, it's six out of nine. So this is correct. On to the next question. We have to choose the figure that correctly shows seven ninths. Ninth means the figure is divided into nine equal parts, which A and B are. So now we only have to look at seven colored parts. Which one has seven colored parts? It's A. A has seven colored parts. B is one, two, three, four, five. Five ninths. What is a unit fraction? Is it when the numerator is always one or when the denominator is always one? Is it the top number or the number below? It's First one, numerator is always one. Denominator can be one or other numbers, it doesn't matter. Next question, which fraction is called a unit fraction? Remember, numerator is always one. So it's the one out of two or one half and one sixth. Now, the question changes. Which two fractions are called one whole? Remember, one whole is when all of them are colored or shaded. So we have two out of two and ten out of ten. It's time for a bonus question. We have six out of nine. Of the circle is shaded. What fraction and six out of nine make one whole? So if you look at the figure, you only need to fill up these one, two, and three parts. So you need to have three out of nine to make one whole. Was that easy? So let's summarize what we have learned today. What was our main topic? It was fractions. What about fractions? The number on top is called the numerator. The number at the bottom is called the denominator. We also talked about if the fraction has one as its numerator, it's called unit fractions. We identified parts and wholes. We also talked about equal parts. Fractions only apply on equal parts. We also talked about one whole. If the whole, whole parts are shaded or colored, then we say it's one whole. We also learned how to write fractions in numbers as well as in words. Now, if somebody asks you, what is a fraction? What would you say? I'd say it's a piece of cake. Thank you. Until next time.